This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Rising global oil inventories through April due to soft fuel demand may strengthen the case for OPEC Plus producers to keep supply cuts in place when they meet on June 2nd, OPEC Plus delegates and analysts say. OPEC Plus meets on Sunday to discuss supply policy and whether to extend voluntary cuts. OPEC Plus sources said earlier this month that producers could maintain the output reductions. The amount of oil that major consuming countries hold in storage varies with supply and demand and is an industry gauge of market fundamentals, alongside other indicators such as the strength of physical crude markets. Asia's imports of crude oil rose to the highest in 12 months in May, with the strength being driven by India as the region's second biggest buyer is on track to see record arrivals. The world's top crude importing region is expected to have arrivals of 27.81 million barrels per day, BPD, up from 26.89 million barrels of oil per day in April, according to data compiled by LSEG Oil Research. That's an increase of 920,000 barrels of oil per day month on month, with the bulk of the gain being accounted for by India, where imports are expected to rise to an all-time high of 5.26 million barrels of oil per day, up 710,000 barrels of oil per day from April's 4.55 million barrels of oil per day. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Oil prices were mostly stable on Thursday as the markets await U.S. crude oil stockpiles data, though resilient U.S. economic activity pointed to borrowing costs staying higher for longer in a potential blow to demand. Brent futures dipped 4 cents or 0.05% to $83.56 a barrel at 0330 GMT while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude eased 10 cents or 0.13 percent to $79.13. The broader risk-off environment has translated to some downward pressures on oil prices, which overrides the larger-than-expected drawdown in U.S. crude inventories from the recent API data, said Yip Jun Rong, market strategist at IG. The global shift to renewables in major energy-consuming sectors slowed in 2023, hindered by regulatory gaps, political pressures and a failure to set clear targets, a policy group said on Wednesday. The COVID-19 pandemic and the Ukraine war helped ambitions to shift to renewables amid growing concerns about energy security, but governments have failed to build on the momentum, an annual assessment by Paris-based REN21 Group said. By the end of last year, only 13 countries, including the United States, India and China, had implemented policies on renewables that cover buildings, industry, transport and agriculture, with only 12.7% of the energy the sectors consume coming from clean sources, REN21 said. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Rare earth quotas in China, which the world's top producer uses to control supply, are set to rise at a much slower rate this year amid a supply glut, industry participants said on Wednesday. Rare earths are a group of 17 elements used in products as varied as lasers, military equipment, magnets for electric vehicles, wind turbines and consumer electronics. China issues mining, smelting and separation quotas annually, typically twice in a year, with 2023 seeing a rare issuance of three batches of quotas. India's silver imports in the first four months of the year have already surpassed the total for all of 2023 on rising demand from the solar panel industry and as investors bet on an outperformance versus gold, government and industry officials told Reuters. Increased imports by the world's biggest silver consumer could support global prices, which are trading near their highest level in more than a decade. India imported a record 4,172 metric tons of silver during January to April, up from 455 tons in the same period a year ago, said a government official. India imported a total of 3,625 tons of silver last year. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Wheat buyers in Asia, Africa and the Middle East, which account for two-thirds of global imports of the staple, have been caught out with relatively little supply after adverse weather in Russia and Europe unexpectedly sent prices surging 30% since April. 
importers who had been buying cargoes one or two months in advance, instead of the usual four to six months, on expectations that bumper supplies would persist will now have to buy grain at higher prices, which will be passed on to consumers, analysts and traders said. Higher food prices would add to the bruised sentiments of consumers that are globally still adjusting to the period of higher inflation rates following the COVID-19 pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.